Hey everyone. Last video for the month. Uh, it's been an awesome month working with you and discussing alignment with all of you. Thank you so much for all of your input. I really appreciate it. And the last piece that I wanted to share this month around alignment is about how we line up with other people in our business, other colleagues that we have, uh, stakeholders, suppliers, customers, uh, this tool applies to all of them. So what we're looking to do here today is to line ourselves up with the people around us. And it's actually the first step in one of my core tools, which I call the Stakeholder Change Thinking Plan. And I want to talk about step one because it's really, really critical in terms of building rapport and empathy and alignment with your stakeholders before we even start to get into trust building and learn unlearn loops and game-changing uh, mindset shifts and all of that good stuff. So this idea around alignment with others, uh, the way that I teach that in the Stakeholder Change Thinking Plan is about knowing and understanding the problems that our stakeholders see. The first step is to put yourself in their shoes, which sounds completely simple, and it is. It really is that simple. And now I'm going to use a whole bunch of words to describe how simple that is. But at its core, that's all we're trying to do, is to put ourselves in somebody else's shoes. Uh, and by doing this, what, we, what we're seeking to do is to really understand their perspective and their worldview. Because if we understand what's motivating them, what's driving them, then we can start to build yesable propositions. We can start to build credibility and trust by solving the problems that they see. There's a whole bunch of goodness that comes out of understanding where that person's at. So the types of things that might contribute to where they are emotionally, physically, mentally, like how they're showing up in our environment, we've got their personal values and beliefs. People have a whole bunch of individual motivations about why they're doing the work they're doing, why they're in the job they're in. Um, there's a whole bunch around personal values and beliefs. And that's probably quite hard to get to know unless you've got to work with somebody over an extended period of time. Some people are open books and some of those values will show up really, really quickly. Um, but that's, that's kind of one element. Uh, you'll have motivators in terms of their performance uh, metrics. Most corporates that I've worked in have some kind of performance measurement uh, program, some kind of career development program. Uh, there's a whole bunch of company motivators around that individual's performance that are going to affect the way that they show up and what they pay attention to. Uh, and that's through a formalized process. You're also going to have a whole bunch of motivators around the types of things that their boss or their leader pays attention to that may or may not be formalized. It may simply be that I work for someone who always asks this question because that's their thing. It might not be in my performance plan, but I know they're going to ask me this question every single time. It's a whole bunch of informal uh, motivators that that person will have in terms of their colleagues and their peers and their boss and the people around them and what they pay attention to, even if it's not formalized in, um, in some way. There's going to be a whole bunch of business drivers, strategy, uh, project ownership, a whole bunch of things that the business is trying to do or, or the, the organization is trying to do um, that that person might be responsible or accountable for. And that's going to motivate their behavior around what's important, where to place focus, uh, all those sorts of things. So you've got a whole plethora of different avenues that pressure can start to be put on this person in terms of calls on their attention, calls on their focus, and what's important to them and what's motivating them in their role. So understanding those motivators, understanding what's driving their way of thinking, what's important to them, super, super important so that you can then start to build understanding, trust, credibility. When we're crafting solutions or suggestions or proposals, we can do that within the context of knowing what's driving this individual's behavior and their thought pattern and their mindset. And that's going to help us to show up in a way that 
Um, maybe we choose the types of solutions that we're putting forward. Maybe we choose the way that we communicate those uh, ideas and proposals. But if we don't have that basic understanding of what's motivating our stakeholders, then we're showing up and, and throwing darts at a dartboard, hoping that one of them sticks, right? So understanding the motivators, understanding what's important to your stakeholder. Same as that very first uh, video that we shared right at the start of the month around understanding what's important for you as an individual and that internal alignment. And then the second video around understanding from a customer's perspective what's important to them and their expectations. You can apply the same pattern, the same thinking around what are our stakeholders' expectations, understanding their motivators, understanding their drivers, understand what's putting pressure on them, what's influencing them, and then start to build your solutions, your suggestions, your proposals, the way that you show up with that person around being able to deal with some of what's driving them as well. That's how you start to build that trust and that credibility. It's how you start to craft something that that person can say yes to because it's within their scope of practice, it's within their scope of ownership, it's within their scope of what they are prepared to work with. Uh, and it's also going to mean that you are starting to naturally orient towards the problems that they see. And when you solve the problems that those stakeholders see, you're going to build all that trust and credibility too. So super, super, super easy and super, super, super critical in terms of starting to build your transformation approach, transformation programs with a whole bunch of different stakeholders that may have different motivations. If you understand those motivations, it's going to help you to adapt and respond to the environment around you and to start to build and craft those messages in a way that's really going to land for your colleagues and the, the people that, you, that you're really trying to get on board with this. So, that's all I wanted to share today. Um, just checking my notes here. Oh, I've got one more story I could share, actually. So, um, super, super quick. Uh, just to try and make it more tangible, right? I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I'm giving you actionable, tangible stuff to work on. So, um, one way that this showed up, I was working with an IT company. Um, or sorry, the IT part of a, an organization, Big Bank. And they, they were set up as a, like an outsourced IT shop. So they had a lot of internal business analysts um, and designers and, and architects and those sorts of people. But a lot of their software development had been externalized. So they would buy software packages off the shelf or they would pay for external development. Um, and in particular, it was more often than not buying something externally, right? So they, they didn't even really have that development kind of capability in terms of owning a vendor relationship, let alone their own software developers. And they'd fought really, really hard internally within the company to, to win a big project and to choose to do that development rather than just buying something off the shelf. So they had a business unit that was asking for, um, it was a risk management tool, and wanted to go out and just buy something. And IT had said, no, no, we want to start to build this capability around being able to deliver services rather than just buying off the shelf. And, and so they'd fought really, really hard to win the permission to do that. And I was working with this IT team and we found ourselves deep in a conversation about how we were going to make a decision about the, um, the data platforming strategy that we were using. And we we're going to use this piece of software or that piece of software. And it became obvious that this was a huge blocker for them. This was, this was a big decision to make. And I remember sitting there and it struck me that if it was me making that decision, that would be months away. We're, not, like, we're nowhere near that decision yet. Like, bring it back. What are we trying to do? What's the problem we're trying to solve, right? And try as, try as we might, um, we just we couldn't get this team to focus on what was going on at hand. They were obsessed with are we using AWS or something else? <laughs> and I remember the point where the conversation turned, turned and I said to them, you're trying to build this credibility and this trust, right? Like, we know that that's, that's, that's your core problem. And they all, they all agreed with this. I said, so the way that you're showing up today is that the way that you would trust 
an IT organisation is IT people, the way that you would trust an IT organisation is if you saw them using all of these amazing tools that startups use, right? So what's Google using today or what's Amazon using today, these big tech giants, or what's the latest startup using this, this cool, funky technology, right? That's how you judge competence. It's how you judge whether or not these people can deliver what you need to. If you were going out and assessing a supplier or a partner to do this, those are the types of things that are going into your decision making. I mean, I can see that. It's showing up. That's why we're obsessed with this conversation about whatever data platform we're using. And I said, flip it up. You've got a business who are asking you to build risk management tools. They couldn't give two hoots whether you're using data platform A or B or any of They don't understand that. They're not IT people. What they care about is whether or not you can solve their problem. They have a whole series of, of reasons why they need this risk management tool. What do you know about what those reasons are? Because if you don't know anything about those reasons, and you go down this IT strategy path, then you're simply judging your own competence based on whether or not you're using the cool funky tech. Your business, your stakeholder is not going to judge your competency based on whether or not you're using the cool funky tech. They're going to judge your competency based on whether or not you solve their problem. That's a whole different kettle of fish. So understanding those motivators, understanding what's driving your stakeholders is really, really critical so that as and when you show up, you can make sure that you're solving the problems that they see. That's what's going to build you the trust and the credibility. That's what's going to build you the, the empathy and the permission to go out and solve the problems that you see. Because if you are absolutely speaking their language around solving this risk management problem and all of the, the reasons why that's important to this business, they're going to let you go and use whatever cool funky tech you want. So that's why this stuff is so critical. Understand your motivators. Understand the problems that your stakeholders see. Because if you can speak to that, then you're going to earn the trust and credibility. Um, you're going to be able to craft the solutions in a way that they can say yes to them. You're going to earn that ability to go and solve a bunch of problems that you see. So that's it from me this month on alignment. Um, I hope you've had an awesome month. Uh, just to get, again, one more quick reminder. If you are not on the mailing list already and you want to get the supporting worksheets and the documents that are going along with these uh, videos uh, each month, we're working towards building this sort of journal for transformation. So if you're keen on any of that, hit me up with a message, hit me up with a DM, run over to the website, join the mailing list, we'll get you signed up, and then you'll start to get the supporting documentation that goes with these videos so that you can really start to implement these tools in practice. That's it from me. I hope that you've had an awesome, awesome week. And wherever you are in the world, go out there, have, have fun. I will see you again very shortly with the next episode.